Great. The gentlelady's time has expired, and the chair recognizes the gentlelady from South Dakota, Ms. Herseth Sandlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you to our witnesses for being here today at this hearing. Yesterday, as we know, light Swede crude for May delivery was trading above $101 per barrel on the New York Mercantile Exchange. And these developments con continue to be shocking and financially burdensome for families and businesses across the country, especially rural America like South Dakota, the state that I represent here in the Congress. Since people drive such long distances daily to get to work, to get their kids to school, to transport goods for their small businesses. The average price for a barrel of oil in January of 2002, about six years ago, was less than $20 a barrel. So even if we discount all the other problems, whether they are geopolitical, environmental supply that flow from our addiction to oil, its price volatility alone seems to me dictates that we must more aggressively move to diversify our energy sources. Now, I strongly believe one solution to this oil addiction is an increased use of domestically produced biofuels, such as ethanol, which have the potential to meet a significant portion of our nation's energy needs over the coming decades if we put the proper policies in place. This includes the robust and aggressive renewable fuel standard passed last December that drives the development and large-scale production of cellulosic ethanol in the decades to come. And I just would have to note for my colleagues on the committee, I know Mr. Sullivan mentioned the concern of his constituents about food prices. It has been shown that it has been energy prices associated with the, pr the processing and the transport of food far more than the cost of the commodities such as corn and wheat that are substantially driving up costs of food. And perhaps what we should evaluate, Mr. Chairman, and that is some of what we have been trying to do and some of what we have proposed in energy policies that have passed the House as it relates to reevaluating some of the policies we put in place years ago, including in 2005, but before that. Because for those of you that don't represent agriculture, our farm policies, most of them, kick in when prices are low. So we save taxpayers money when we are not paying loan deficiency payments or countercyclical cyclical payments when the price of corn is where it has been, over $4 a bushel, the price of wheat, price of soybeans with what they have been. And so we need to look at doing the same thing when it looks like other commodities prices are so volatile and going up to reevaluate how we spend taxpayer dollars when prices are high and when they are low. And we will look forward to getting your thoughts on that as well as your thoughts on biofuels distribution and production across the country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great. Gentlelady's uh, time.